Lord. Thank you for visiting us at the Buddha Dasa in the Pani Archive. I think you already know my first question. Mm. The difficult or easy one. Please can you introduce yourself. All ah, right. <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm Rod Bucknell, uh, at one stage known as Ariyananda Bhikkhu. Uh, I'm from Australia, and um, that's who I am. Yep. So, how did you ever become interested in, in Buddhism? Mm. And uh, how did you ever hear about Buddhism? Well, um, Strangely, the, the period that we're talking about here is much the period that we heard of from Christopher. The mid-1960s was a time when everybody was interested in anything that came from India uh, or had some sort of connection with India or spirituality in general. And uh, so it was the same with me. Really what interested me was the notion of um, meditation I wanted to learn about meditation, I wanted to do meditation. And in those days, if you were interested in meditation, the place to go was India. One went to India, found a guru and got down to business. So I was heading for India when in uh, 1966, I think it probably was, I, uh, I gave up my job and set off or in the general direction of India. So uh, I had been to Thailand before and so I, 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 I liked Thailand, I had a very positive impression of it, so I thought I will go through by way of Bangkok and then uh, search for a guru once I've got to India. I, I never got to India on that occasion. Um, passing through Bangkok I met a, uh, a novice, uh, I think it was at Wat Po, I was sightseeing at Wat Po, and this young novice came up to me and started explaining to me all about the, the carvings there. And uh, he said, why don't you come and stay in our, in our Wat, rather than paying for a hotel room? And I thought that's a, an interesting and good idea. So I went and stayed at, uh, at his Wat there, and before long, he was saying, you don't need to go to India if you want to learn meditation. We have meditation centers right here in, in Thailand, right here in Bangkok. And uh, you can learn meditation here. So I took him up on that. And he, uh, he took me uh, to uh, Wat Mahathat. And, uh, uh, oh, what was the man's name? The teacher there. Who, Ah, it's terrible that I can't. The Burmese one? No, one no, no, it's a Thai, Thai man. Yeah, I forget too. Yeah. In, uh, but the, 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 to cut the story short, I met the meditation master there. I, I liked the idea of learning under his guidance. And we arranged for me to move in and do a, a course there, a meditation course. Nobody told me how long it was going to take. It was, I had sort of imagined that it was uh, two or three days perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> so I was so naive. And, uh, but it really, uh, it really got me. I, I could see that there was something in this, in this meditation. Now this was, a, um, this was meditation in the Mahasi Sayadaw style. So ultimately the, the guru, the teacher was Burmese, if you look at it that way. And uh, uh, it was very intensive. It was very hard work. There was no way in the world that you could uh, just decide that, oh, I, I want to have an afternoon off today. I want to, I'd like to go sightseeing or something like that. No, this was absolutely one-pointed uh, meditation from uh, dawn to dusk each day. And um, I, I was pleased to find that although it was hard work and although it was a struggle in the beginning, it did bear fruit and I became very impressed with the sorts of outcomes that, that came from that. And so I ended up staying for six weeks. 
Um, I was a little bit uh, puzzled in the end when, uh, when I took leave of uh, the teacher that he, he gave me a certificate to say that I had done the course. I thought that's not quite what I had expected, but I, I promised him that I would continue and he told me, uh, because I had said I find it very hot here in Bangkok and I would rather be somewhere cooler and I'd rather be somewhere in a forest environment rather than in the middle of a big city. Um, and he advised me to go to a, a certain small monastery in Chiang Mai and, uh, and look around. And so I ended up at Wat Umong, uh, just a short distance outside of the city of Chiang Mai. And, uh, and one of the things about Wat Umong was that they were very strong followers of um, Buddhadasa Bhikkhu, Ajahn Buddhadasa. And so I, uh, there was, I wasn't eligible to have a kuti to myself. They had a great big library building and so I was given a, a spot on the floor of the, the library uh, with a, sharing the floor with a few other people and, uh, and I continued with my meditation. But the thing I was going to say is that every morning at crack of dawn, one would be woken by a, a, a recording of a, of a talk by Ajahn Buddhadasa. So this was how every day began with a, a, a Dhamma talk by Ajahn Buddhadasa. So I asked people, um, who, is, who is this person that we hear every morning? And, uh, and they told me, they told me he's, he's a, 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 a teacher from the south of Thailand, uh, you must meet him someday, you must uh, talk with him someday. And uh, another thing they said was, you see these books all around, this was the library, it's quite a, big, quite a big hall full of books. These books, most of them are the talks of the Venerable Buddhadasa. And another thing that you should do one of these days is get someone to tell you what's in these books and tell you what the Venerable Buddhadasa has to say. So these were two, uh, two, two things that I put away in the back of my mind. Uh, that's how I came to know Buddhadasa and uh, ultimately uh, I ended up, it's a longer story, I'll just give a brief summary so you've got the, the general picture. I ended up becoming uh, convinced that I wanted to really find out what this chap had to say. The, uh, the, the elderly gentleman who was, uh, who was supporting the Wat, Wat Umong, um, Chao Chun, uh, Chao Chun Sirorot is his full name, he was very keen to have me stay and uh, everyone was saying, oh you must become a monk someday and I wasn't at all sure about that at that stage but um, I did I did become interested in what I heard and so uh, first of all I read uh, I read a few there were a few of his books translated into English and I think it was probably what was the name of that uh, Indian monk? Nagasena. 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 Uh, he, uh, he was equally interested in the teachings of Buddhadasa and he encouraged me also to so I read just a few translations and then the day came when, you know, everyone was saying, well, ultimately you, you should be doing the translation yourself. <laughs> so there were lots, lots of good advice from all quarters, <laughs> but uh, I was not quite sure that I, was that I was that committed. But anyhow, to cut a long story short, I did decide that I was going to stay on. Uh, I'd, I'd initially come with, I think I had my visa allowed me to stay for one month but I ended up uh, getting a one-year residency uh, permit and I ended up deciding that I was going to become a monk. So that took me eight months, sorry, nine months to make that decision. So I was, I was ordained by um, uh, uh, Panyananda Bhikkhu, Panyananda uh, at Wachama Pratan. He became my, my preceptor and my teacher. 
And of course, he's very close to Venerable Buddhadasa, and so was Chao Chuyen. So there were these influences from all directions. But it was some time before I actually got to meet um, uh, Ajahn Buddhadasa at, at Chaya, at um, uh, Suan Mok. Zhao yeah. Chen had tried very hard to recruit Ajahn Buddhadasa to come to Wat Umong. Yeah. It was a famous historical temple that had run yeah. down, yeah. and he was the main person who helped it renovate, and Ajahn Buddhadasa wasn't willing to go, so he convinced Long Pa Panya, yeah. who at that time was in Malaysia, and oh. he be Long Pa Panya became nationally known while he was the abbot mm. in Chiang Mai for 15 years. Yes. But right. by the time you were there, he had already left. That's right. So he was, he was, a, he was a sort of nominal abbot, I suppose, also of of Wat Umong, as 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 well as being actually located at uh, Wat Chon Lapatan, and he, he 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 came occasionally, and I got to know him, and so I was ordained at Wat Chon Lapatan actually, yeah. Uh, and so yeah, that's how I, I of course, I got to know. Um, Ajahn Buddhadasa in person, uh, only by going to to stay at at, at uh, Sun Mok, but that came later. So it was about. Um, Could, um, because you had some relationship with Zhao Chun, yeah, who was very important for. Ajahn Buddhadasa becoming known in northern Thailand mm -hmm. because he was from the south. People spoke a somewhat different language. Mm -hmm. Important cultural differences, historical differences. Uh, so I, I think if something more about your relationship with Zhao Chun because part of Ajahn Buddhadasa's history mm. is also people like Zhao Chu, mm. as well as monks like Long Pop Banya. Mm. So memories you have of your interactions with Zhao Chu, mm. I think also help us understand the kind of people who, Thai people as well, who were drawn to Ajahn Buddhadasa and how he encouraged them and mm. what they did. Yes, yeah, so Chao Chun was a was very much an influence uh, uh, during that that, that period. Um, of course, he was the one who, in the first place, he he was the supporter of of Wat Umong. Uh, he had put all the the effort and the and the, and the money into uh, getting it. Uh, into a, a, a viable state, and, and you know, so it was his his little brainchild to restore this ancient, decaying temple and get it up and running again. Um, and I, I, I quite I quite soon come, came to feel he was very much a, a sort of father figure. You know, he was he was not a monk, but he was a very dedicated Buddhist and very dedicated to to um, spreading the word. And I think in the long run, he always hoped that I would, um, uh, after having learned all the things one needed to know, go back to my home, hometown, my home country anyway, and, uh, and, and perhaps become a, a, a teacher in some, uh, in some role or other. I, in, in fact, ended up becoming a, a university uh, lecturer and researcher. And so I, I did actually, he, his dream did come true in that sense. But um, um, as I was going through that initial nine month period of sort of settling in and deciding what I wanted to do, um, at one stage I, I said, oh, uh, I see that, you know, the monks, they, they don't eat after midday. 
So I would like to adopt that practice too. I, I had been eating in the, in the evenings. And in fact, uh, I would always go and eat that evening meal with Chao Chun because he, he was an elderly gentleman. He used to just eat in his kuti, and so I would go and join him in his kuti for the evening meal. So it was quite a, a, a family sort of relationship. It was a, like a fatherly role that he was playing there. And um, I may say that, you may recall, I said in the beginning that I was going to India initially. This was my original intention. So I came to Thailand with a very little real knowledge of Buddhism. And it was the meditation in, in Bangkok at, at, at Wat Mahatha that uh, persuaded me to look further. This, this, this was interesting. This was something that I had to look further into. And the thing about Wat Umong was that, first of all, it was, a, it was a forest, a forest what? In a big teak forest with kutis scattered around. Very pleasant environment. And they had quite a, a library there. So that was, that was where I lived, in the library. And so I did a lot of reading. I continued my... In Thai. Ah, now see, this is the, this is where it, this is where a swing happens because uh, all these books by Buddha Dasa that they were showing me, there were a few in English, but most of like them. Three <laughs> yes, not even a handful, and uh, uh, but but there were rows and rows of books in Thai, and these were not not actually, as far as I gathered, they were not books that that. Uh, Ajahn Buddhadasa had written. They were records of his teachings on many different occasions. So Very they, few. He did some writing mm. in his first ten mm. years mm. when he largely lived by himself. Mm. But most of the books were from talks. Yeah. yeah, so so here I was sleeping on the floor every night in the midst of all this and, and not really having much idea what treasures may lie hidden in there. And um, so I, I, I decided, well, in, in any case, of course, it was going to be a very good idea to master the Thai language. And so uh, that was my first task. Um, and then to go on and, 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 and discover what these books contained. So people were telling me that there were, look, there's all these books, this, you should get into them, you know. And so I, I went to the shelves and I, I just sort of grabbed a handful of books and pulled them off the shelves. They were these rather flimsy paperback books that are produced very cheaply, no doubt, here in Thailand. And I pulled out a handful of books and lo and behold, I, I just had my hand around the backs of the books, the spines of the books, but the rest of the book was completely gone. It had been eaten away by termites. <laughs> and, that, that, and then I, I learnt this very useful Thai phrase, Mot Kun, the ants have come up. <laughs> the, the ants have got up and chewed away all the, the, the body of the books. And this went all along the shelves and nobody had been aware of this. The books were sitting there and they'd been eaten away by ants and nobody had noticed. So, <laughs> well anyway, everyone was listening to the, uh, the morning recording so they didn't need to look at the books. But anyway, Chao Chun encouraged me and, uh, and with the assist, I, I had, of course, I had a, a, a book, Teach, I forget what it was called, but it, it meant Teach Yourself Thai, Mary Haas. Uh -huh. Yeah, what, what's that book called? Anyway, anyway. I know her dictionary. <laughs> yeah, I had that too, yeah. yeah. But, but this, this was a, a step-by-step -step course in Thai. And then there was a, a, a young novice who was sort of assigned to me and I sat down and started translating the, the, a book that um, Chao Chun recommended, which, uh, which was Tama Kap Nak Saksa, Dhamma, Buddha Dhamma for Students. And I've later found that it also has a, a different title, uh, Lak Tam Samra Nak Saksa, Dhamma for Students, once again. Um, like, like the sutras, they often have various different titles. Um, so, little by little, and with my, my, my tutor, uh, and with help from uh, Chao Chun, and with my own natural curiosity for languages and my fondness for linguistics generally, um, 
by the end of about uh, a year and a half, I, I, I had worked, translated my way slowly through that, that book. Now, I've, I've got to mention this is a little bit out of, the, out of chronological sequence, but the most important thing to, to mention is that, of course, after nine months at Watumong, I, 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 I came the ordination. And at that stage, I still was just learning Thai. And so this is about another, another nine months after that that uh, I completed the, the first translation. I, I, I don't know if this will be confirmed by, the, uh, by, by Paco's res researchers, but uh, uh, I'm a little bit unclear in my mind just what the chronology was. But anyhow, so that's how the, uh, uh, the interest in Buddhadasa came about. Because I found that a very good little book uh, for someone who was basically a beginner. I, I felt I was a beginner. You know. The library was full of, of uh, there were lots of English books in the library, but um, that little book of Buddha Dasa's was a very good way to begin, I felt, because he, he asks just questions, he's asking questions that a foreigner might ask a monk here in Thailand, and how would you answer that question? So, uh, this, uh, that was the sort of book it was. And, and so each, each question was, the question and the answer were not much more than a page out of a, a little book like that. It was a very good way to make a start, I, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Until this day, uh, it's being used, this translation, it has been revised, but it's, it's now even being used on social media. So they are like weekly posts. What, one of those uh, Buddha Dharma for students question will be posted on the social media. I didn't know that. Facebook. <laughs> okay. yes. Yes. You don't want to name brands. <laughs> but to, to oh. show you that it's still very much used. Oh, that's, that's very uh, yeah. encouraging to know that. Yeah. Okay. Because once one starts wondering, oh, uh, you know, does the, is this going any further or, or does it stop here? Oh, it, no, obviously, it doesn't still stop. <laughs> very appropriate and. Mm. Your translation, the revision was minor, but when we wanted to reprint it, it had to be typeset. Mm. It wasn't possible then to, so it was typeset, mm. and then in the process a little editing, but mm. yeah. the revision was trivial. Mm. And so now it's on, um, that which shall not be named. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that so that was that was how it began, and then I uh, um, I took another hint from your excuse. I took another hint from um, from the Yom uh, Chao Chun um, that uh, I might consider translating Pasa Kon Pasa Tam, two kinds of language. I. I, I translated it. I perhaps should have been more literal with the title. Um, but, and, and I, might, I might save that up for tomorrow because that's, that's what I'm going to be talking about, the two kinds of language. But that was, so that was how it, it, it got going and then, and then I became slightly more ambitious and, and then there was uh, um, rather longer books. So, um, uh, no, what was the other one you, you mentioned? Uh, handbook for Mankind. That's it, yes. Handbook for Mankind. And uh, another one? Why were you born? Yes. <laughs> okay. So I know there were five altogether, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, there was, a, there, was a, there was a sixth one, which it, it, it went in with uh, some translations by Santikaro. Santikaro. Uh, Oh, looking within. Looking within. Looking within. Yes. Mm. Uh, I never, I never quite discovered whether that ended up being, being printed. I think it, I'm sure it must have. I will show you in the archive. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so then I, I um, basically, you know, tra tra trans the translation and my own meditation um, practice. And, and of course, visiting uh, Suen Mok, which I did at least twice. Uh, so, which circumstances 
led you to actually go and visit Stonewall from Working Monk? Oh, well, I mean, if, um, you know, uh, Ajahn Buddhadasa was not going to come to, to Wadu Mong, so I'll go to, I'll go to Swan Mong. Yeah, it's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> and uh, so I found it a, a, a very good experience also, of course, with being with the actual person. And, and there were some interesting uh, other monks there. Some of the, the names that you two were mentioning just before. You know, Pasatiko was not actually there at that time. Uh, he was he, he, he was with um, he, he was with Banyananda in, at uh, Wachanla Patan, but uh, um, who Wimelo Wimelo was there, and then uh, uh, another another Western monk. Uh, was uh, Sadar Lorca, you may have heard of him, but he, he, he was not resident in Thailand ever. He was actually based in Hong Kong and he came for a, for a visit of about a month and so I got to know him there. And all that contributed. And so, I, so there was the meditation, the translation work and the general more systematic study of, of, of this thing we call Buddhism. And I realise that it's not uh, it's not enough to read the um, translations of the texts. I wanted to read Pali too, but I was a bit slow to get started on that. But by the time I completed my four years as a bhikkhu, um, I, 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 I was uh, a different sort of person. Yeah. Yeah. And when you met Ajahn Buddhadasa, uh, did you discuss translation? Yes, yes, so he, he was all in favour. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, uh, I don't think, I don't think he, he ever actually suggested any particular book that I might consider doing. Uh, I, 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 I don't recall him ever doing that. I think what I discovered was that I was particularly interested in this one particular teaching of his, one particular aspect of his understanding of the Dharma was the, uh, the notion of pasa uh, kon uh, pasa tam, human language and Dhamma language. It, it really um, clicked with me. Mm. And do you remember the actual condition of the very first meeting with Ajahn Buddhadasa? Your first arrival in what's going on? Oh, do no, I really don't. I'm afraid. <laughs> That's almost fifty years ago. Uh, yeah, it's it's forty something years. Yes. That's right, for sure. Yeah. But uh, one little one little thing, I, I uh, he, he 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 felt that that's that's what I should be doing. You know, he didn't want me to read any books. I mean. Um, I was there, I think I must have spent a pansa there for the, the, the full three months. And um, uh, he was very happy for me to, to be translating while I was there. But he, he really didn't want me to. He, he had quite a library, I'm sure, inside his kuti. I never got to see it. But um, uh, no, he, he says, you've, you've got to stay focused. So that's what I did. But I, I must say, it's a, I was impressed by the environment, and I was impressed by all the things that were going on. The the um, people people were doing whatever they, they they were good at doing. Like if someone was a good artist, then he was painting paintings, and somebody else was good at carpentry, and he was doing carpentry. And uh, so there was no there was no one rule for everybody, but. Uh, just make it a kamatana, make it a, an exercise in meditation, exercise in mindfulness. Do you see any teaching of Ajahn Buddhadasa which would be particularly relevant for, for today, for the society of today? Yes, well, I'm, I'm, 
I ha I'm hoping to learn something uh, uh, these next few days because I realize that my own knowledge of what uh, Ajahn Buddhadasa had to say is very focused on, on what I was interested in. And I suppose that's very natural. Um, but I'm, I'm, I was quite aware that he was very um, concerned about all sorts of uh, very practical uh, things that had nothing obviously to do with, um, with, with um, meditation or, or uh, he's, he's interested in social issues um, and was often quite critical of the way things were being done right here in Thailand um, and he had uh, uh, he probably made a few um, a few foes, a few enemies through 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 being outspoken about things that people didn't want people anyone to speak about, and so he was a he was a kind of social rebel in a way. Uh, now I I wouldn't I, I've always uh, thought that I I, I I don't want to say anything about politics, so I <laughs> so I have nothing to say about that myself. Uh, well, at that time, uh, I've changed my, my I've become more liberal about all that in the meantime, but uh, I, I gather from what I have heard from other people that uh, uh, Ajahn Buddhadasa had a lot to say about social issues, he, was, he had a lot to say about the Sangha, about the conduct of the Sangha, and, and, and this of course came up in some of, the, some of his, his talks, and uh, he, he, uh, uh, he, he, was, he was very prepared to speak out and um, and uh, and rightly so, I'd say. Mm. Yeah. And for yourself, is there anything that has uh, made an influence on you until today from meeting Ajahn Buddha personally? Yeah. Well, the first thing was, I mean, this is, of course, the whole reason why I was I was here at all was. Um, that he taught me about Buddhism and about the, the, the Buddha's teachings. So these books that I was translating, these were, these were a very good uh, introduction for someone like myself who wanted to find out what the Buddha was on about, what his teaching was. And uh, here I was getting it from a person who really knew the answers. To, to those sorts of questions. And so there were lo lots of things that, for, for me as a, as a sort of beginner, when I first came to Thailand, um, I found that this thing we call Buddhism or Buddha Dhamma was not something that I, I could sort of just take on board uh, at first meeting. It, it was a long, slow process. And there were things that, for a long time, I n never got the hang of it. Why? What? What does this mean? What is he? What is he talking about? And um, and I found that Buddha Dasa's notion of uh, everyday language and Dharma language very helpful. And as Buddha Dasa explains it, uh, for example, uh, every every Thai person knows the story of. Uh, the, the Buddha to be meditating and Mara coming along and trying to interrupt his meditation and distract him and so on. Uh, at first glance it's, it's, it sounds like a, a sort of myth. I mean, who's this Mara fellow, you know, and where does he fit in? That, that, that's a, there's nothing, there's no, nothing about him in the, in the history books. What's going on here? So that, that is an example of Dhamma language and his, Mara is not, a, not an actual uh, flesh and bones uh, person or, or god or demon or, or someone like that. Mara is a, a, a sort of figurative representation of distracting thoughts or distracting whatever it is, anything that distracts from your movement along the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, you can put that under the heading of Mara. Right? And so this kind of thing was very helpful to me. And so I realize, as Buddha Dasa's teachings gradually make you realize, that uh, 
we have to look, we often have to look for the meaning behind the words. And so the, the, uh, the meaning, the actual gist of what is being said is sometimes not immediately apparent. You've just got to think outside the square a little bit. Uh, and the main overall message is that uh, usually we tend to look outwards to find the meaning. You know, um, something, something around us, something in the, in the world outside is what he's talking about. But no, what the Buddha is talking about is inside. It's all about the world inside our heads and our, our emotions and so on. It's all that that he's talking about. He's talking about what's going on inside. And what's going on outside is of secondary importance to that. And that is not new. A lot of that we know already. And the this, this scientists and the uh, physicists and, of, and scientists of every kind learning about the world outside. But the world inside remains, for most people, a complete mystery. Or else most of us are not even aware that there's anything going on inside. And yet there's so much going on inside our heads and inside our, our whole being. Um, and that's what Buddha Dasa in, indirectly was saying. So he's saying, uh, and uh, so that, that, that book, Looking Within, the title, is, 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 is very much a summary of, of, of his approach. And it's, it's nothing new. I mean, the, the Buddha was saying exactly that. But, but it's very easily forgotten. And so that, that uh, well, it was not news to me in a way, because, of course, the whole reason why I was interested in meditation was because I was, to some extent, to a very shallow extent, uh, aware that there's all sorts of stuff going on in, inside that uh, uh, we don't know about and that we don't know how to deal with and we don't know um, uh, don't know how to how to come to terms with it and uh, and so what I was what I was reading in, the, in, in these translations that, <laughs> that I was doing myself was um, that was the main message that came out of it that it's all about what's going on inside. What's going on outside, we sort of know how to deal with that in most cases, but what's going on inside is, is where we should be, should be looking. <laughs> well, thank you, Ajahn Rajan. And thank you for inviting me to come and be part of this very interesting process. And, 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 to, and thank you also to all the people who have who are behind. I know I've, I've seen, met just a few of you, but I know there's a whole team <laughs> working behind the scenes. So thank you all. And thank you for asking me to come along, Paco. Very much appreciated.